If I never see you again, you're going to hear the truth today. My God, God is looking for vessels that He can work through. So this King Jehoram, he thought he was better because he didn't have the image of Baal. How many know? Look at verse 3. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jehoram. Or Jeroboam, I'm sorry. How many know? I got to find out what was the sin of Jeroboam. Was Jeroboam's sin worse than Baal's sin, the image of Baal? He held on to the sins of Jeroboam. What was the sin of Jeroboam, saints? Listen to this preacher this morning. The sin of Jeroboam was a state religion. It was a state religion that had everybody thinking you are right if you follow our way. How many know back in the 60s, the people of America followed the state religion? We thought we were the flower generation. And it was all right to shack up. It was all right to do this. We were following a state religion. How many know that's why abortion is, is so prevalent? Because they're following a state religion. Now they're trying to put a new state religion. That same-sex marriages is all right. The sins of Jeroboam represented a state religion. It represented a form of religion or a form of God. It represented a form of religious worship. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God's prophet speaks God's promises. I know it sounds like it's starting off rough, but I told you, cleave on to verse 19. Amen? We need a voice. We need a voice in this hour. We need somebody that's going to stand up and tell the truth. In other words, one sin was just as bad as the other sin. Is that right? That's right. The Bible says, nevertheless, the daddy and the mama did this, but the children did that. I think that went right over your head. The Bible says that Jehoram, mom and dad, did one thing and the kids did another. Did you hear that now? The daddy and mama sin is one thing and the children doing another sin and they're bickering in the house. Well, daddy, I ain't never lived like that. <laughs> well, daddy, I ain't never did. What did you and mama do when y'all were younger? Do you, under, do you see it now? That the son thought he was better than his mom and daddy. We got some children that think they're better than their mommy and their daddy. But may I tell you, all sin will bring you to hell this morning. One sin is just as bad as the other sin. How many know they both led the people of God astray? Right. Yeah. Both of them led the people of God to, to stray, to sin, and not to serve God. Would you look at verse 4 with me? <clears throat> you got to get this in your spirit. And Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master. Which other words he meant, he, he bred sheep. And he rendered unto the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs. And a hundred thousand rams with the wool. I had to stop there because my Bible started off by saying this brother was sinning. Is that right? Yes, but how many know if you met King Jehoram, you would have thought God was blessing him. How much or how many did Misha the king give him? A hundred thousand rams. A hundred thousand lambs. And a thousand thousand pieces of wool. How many know you look on the outside? Man, that brother blessed of the Lord. Ooh, man, he must be doing something right. Do you see that, saints? Yeah. Telephone saints, do you see it? The Bible starts off by saying this man was evil. Listen, I don't, I don't care. I could care less if you got your own company. I could care less if you got a million dollars in the bank. If God say you're evil, you're evil. <clears throat> That's why, I live. let me tell you the gospel truth. People produce other people. That's why you got thousands of people at a church. Because once a church gets over a certain number of people, oh, let's go to that church and check it out. And then people begin, they, they don't have any desire to change. <clears throat> they don't have any desire to grow. I'm trying to tell somebody this morning. 
You better hear this prophet. Listen to me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get something over to you this morning. I truly want to serve God. And if you think I'm missing God, I can't, I can't force you to think I am or not. But I'm telling you what, I do hear from God. That's right. And I hear God telling me to tell some folks to start digging some ditches. Do you understand that they were about to fight and what did the prophet tell them to do? Dig some ditches. No, preacher. We need to go get some guns. We need to go get some swords. We dig ditches. Why? King Jeroboam, Jeroboam, he thinks he's doing good. Look how, I'm, look how I'm prospering. How many know that's the prosperity message? Look how good I'm looking. My business is doing well. It's doing well. How many know we haven't heard it from the prophet yet? So how can he be being blessed? How can this thing be going on? When the Bible starts off by saying these people were evil. Verse 7. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. Everybody said, mm -mm, Don't do that. Don't do that. Show me where he sought the Lord. He didn't. No, that's my mama. That's my brother. That's my sister. I got to go. Didn't even seek the Lord. He said, I know we cousins. What's up, homie? How many know that sometimes we find ourselves in a fight that we don't even belong in? Doesn't it look like somebody's being blessed? But, they, but they're not living according to God's word? How many know big uh, doesn't mean good? And numbers don't mean God. The question is, with all this going on, men and women of God, where is their covering? Where is their covering? All this is going on. The daddy and mama died. Now he's sinning. Now the king is, is giving them money, but he says, you know what? Your daddy did, so I don't fear you anymore. So I'm just not going to do it anymore. So he goes to his cousin and he says, cousin, can you help me fight this fight? Because he's rebelling against me. He's not doing it anymore. But there's no covering up to now. There's no prophet in the house. There's no word from God in the house. Everybody doing their own thing. How many know they're going to get the prophet after the cows have left the barn? Oh, I know. Now let's go see if we can hear from God. You should have been talking to God months ago. You can't hear from God. You need to go to a prophet. No prophet. No covering. But if you stop the story now, how many know it looks like these people are getting blessed? How many people you can look around you and they look like they're being blessed and they have no clue of what God is doing? They're backslidden. They don't even seek God. Well, how are they getting blessed? How many know? My God, do not wish for the wealth of the wicked. Verse 5 says he began to number the people. In other words, the king began to number the people because he said, I want to know if I can do this thing. How many know that this is a picture of his might and not God's might? How many know God does not count numbers, he makes numbers count? So he began to count men and women like us. Well, my credit score is three, I can't get a, a, a house. I begin to count and see what I have. Well, I don't think I can go get that, that vehicle because I don't have enough. We begin to count. We begin to do things in our own might. I'm here to tell somebody, it doesn't matter what your neighbor say, your wife say, your mama say. If you done sought the Lord and he gave you an answer, stand on it. Family time. 